Grace, mercy, and peace has been given to each and to every one of us from God, our loving Father, through his Son, our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we are gathered today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Again, you'll have to bear with me today. I still have the aftermath of this sinus infection, and I'm kind of relegated to the condemned section up here. But uh, I'll try not to breathe on you, but yet share with you what God is speaking to each of us today. In this Lenten season, we've been focusing upon this desire of our hearts to truly see God and to truly see and understand the magnitude of the gift of his son. And we've asked God to open our minds, and we've asked God to open our hearts, and today we're going to ask God to open our ears. And so if there was a fourth Sunday next week, what would that be? Wouldn't be open our mouths, okay? You know the old joke, God gave us two eyes and two ears, but only one mouth, okay? And there's a reason for it. Wednesday night at the uh, midweek service, I began the the sermon message by asking the people this question. When we look at the Advent season, we look at God's magnificence in our life, we have to also ask ourselves, what would have happened if he had not come? What would this world be like? What, What would your life be like? We don't even want to imagine. It's beyond comprehension. It is beyond, we'd still be not only in sin, we'd still be in slavery. To slavery to our sins and slavery to the powers that be on this earth. But by the grace of God, and we talked about the angel Gabriel, when God came to him with his planning, and Gabriel said, hey, how are we going to do this? Is he going to go in on chariot? Is he going to ride the white stallion? Is he going to go in with trumpets and legions of angels? God said, no, he's going to come as a baby. And you can imagine the look on Gabriel's face. The Son of God, sitting on the throne in heaven next to his father, is going to go to earth as a baby. God said, that's right. Why would he do this? Today we're going to answer that question, hopefully, by encouraging each of us, as we have committed to opening our minds and opening our hearts and opening our eyes, now we need to make sure that we open our ears. There's an amazing story in 1 Kings about a great prophet of God that took on the prophets of the wicked female leader of the great nation that day, and he destroyed the prophets. Wow. But then the evil leader said, I will destroy you. And he ran, and he hid, and he was fearful. Can you imagine trusting in God to destroy those against God, but yet you would let someone threaten to take your life and you run and hide? And Elijah's not the first, and he won't be the last. But my prayer is that's not the way you will choose to respond to our God. And after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, and if you go back to 1 Kings and ring the elongated section there, you, you'll, you'll be acutely aware that there were all sorts of magnificent things going on For God to show his presence, but he didn't speak. He didn't yell, he didn't scream, he didn't holler, like most of us humans would have have done. What are you thinking? I have blessed you, given you all this power, I've, I've enabled you to kill the enemy and to overcome the wickedness of those that fight against you, and you let one woman send you running and hiding in the desert. And this happens. If you go to 1 Kings, after he walked for 40 days and 40 nights into the desert. But God doesn't yell at him. God doesn't scream at him. God doesn't threaten him. 
God doesn't point out his weakness and his failures. God comes to him, and the scripture says, in a still, small voice. And depending on what translation you're looking at, some of the translations says God whispers. And when we look at our own lives, we have to ask ourselves, how is it that God speaks to me? God sometimes whispers so that we will move closer to hear him. When you're in a conversation with somebody that you trust and you care about and you love and, and, and you, you feel safe for that person, they say something and you don't hear you. I'm sorry, what, what was that? What was that? And maybe God's whispering to us because he wants us to do the same thing with him. Say, God, I'm listening. Let me get a little closer. What was that you were saying? I don't know about you and your life, but I can <clears throat> tell you I've made many stupid mistakes, and I've been wrong in many ways. I've failed in many ways. God has never screamed at me, not one time. He has lovingly put his arms around me. He has graciously pointed in a different direction. He has lovingly and kindly whispered in my ear. And I'm not talking about psychotic craziness. He's not telling me to go kill anybody. He's not telling me to drive off a cliff. He's not telling me to cut somebody's throat. He is whispering in my ear those words of encouragement. <clears throat> I love you. My son died for you. And for you, I want you to understand the still small voice of God never calls on me to be like another person. It appeals to me to rise to my full stature and to fulfill the promise that sleeps within my being. I wanted to stop just for a second and share with you. When I put together these slides, you can go ahead and go to the next one, Michael. When I put these slides together each and every week, what I do is I sit down and I do an outline of what I think the message for the day should be, and especially when we're doing a series of three or four sermons. And, and I break down those outlines, and then I go back and I put, put additional information to, to each of the outlines, and then I go looking for the pictures that I can find that will help to imprint that image for us. Some of us are audio learners, and we can listen and we remember every word that was said. Very few are. Most of us are visual learners. And we remember far more what we see than what we hear. Because our mind will pull this picture up again. Listen to God's voice. Wow. In everything you do and everywhere you go. He is the one that will keep you on track. Now, you probably can't see it there, but those are words of wisdom from the great prophet Solomon in the Proverbs. Solomon understood what it means for God to speak to us in that small, quiet whisper. You know the old son, when he has sat and talks, everybody listens? Well, you don't see that on the commercials anymore, do you? <laughs> If Hutton's no longer in business. <clears throat> you know, we ought to have a sign on every church that says, when God whispers, his sons and his daughters listen. Wow. Hear the whisper of God in the silence of your mind and your heart and your soul. And if you have done successfully what we've been encouraging each of us to do, to open the eyes of our hearts, to open the eyes of our mind, to open the eyes of our ears, we will hear that whisper. We will hear it. Now, I venture to say more than once today during that cowboy game, you will hear a lot of things that will not come out as whispers. Okay? And because we're good people, we will give you the benefit of the doubt that most of them will be words that we would not be embarrassed at our children to hear. But we might speak them in anger or frustration or resentment. And we would expect that of God if God was like us. But he's not like us. 
And thank God he's not. Because when he gets frustrated and when he gets angry and when he just doesn't understand our, our simple stupidity, he will come closer to us and he will whisper, it's okay. If you need a way out, I'll show you that way. If you need a door opened, I will open that door. If you need a window to be raised, I will raise that window. The best. Wow. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with a heart. And how does the heart feel it? The heart can only feel it if we feed it. And we feed it with our eyes and we feed it with our ears. You know, you can, you can have your eyes closed. You can be laying in bed and you hear sounds and you know exactly what they are. You can have your eyes closed and then you can open your eyes and you can see things and you know clearly what it is. And God is saying the same thing to us. Notice who made that quote? <coughs> Helen Keller, who never, ever, one second of her life had the privilege of hearing with her ears or seeing with her eyes, but yet she so clearly knew God with her heart. Wow. And if a woman who's dealt with challenges that hopefully you and I will never have to deal with, and yet to know God so intimately and so closely because she opened her heart to him, how magnificent. That is. But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear or fear of harm. Again, magnificently powerful words written by our brother in Christ, King Solomon, as he wrote the Proverbs, which were written by him at the inspiration of God to extend to you and to me the gift of wisdom that God had given to him. When you read Proverbs, you have to read it with the understanding. These are not just a storyteller writing words. This is a man of God who God declared would be the wisest man ever to live, sharing his wisdom. Wisdom that came by the gift of God and wisdom that also came by failure at his own expense. And he is saying to us, but all who listen to God, to me, will live in peace, untroubled by fears of harm. What a sweet life that would be. So God is challenging us today. There is a voice that doesn't use words. You just listen. God's speaking to you right now. I guarantee you. And in your own heart, your own mind, what is he saying? Wow. In the Gospel of John, John writes for us, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome this world. The words of Jesus recorded by John. And Jesus is saying the same thing. He said, I'm here for you. I'm here to make your life better. I'm in order that you might live a life that is blessed. I am here to take away the pain and the hurt and not to totally remove it because this is the real world we live in, but to give you the strength and the power and the wisdom and the faith to overcome it. Wow. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. That's Jesus' promise. That's his promise to each and to every one of us. But Jesus didn't say, follow your fellow Christians. What did he say? He said, follow me. Do what I do. You know, don't look at your best friend or your brother or your father or your next door neighbor or your mother or anybody else. Look to Jesus and follow Jesus. 
And if they are also Christian, then hopefully you'll be walking side by side, arm in arm, hand in hand, together, moving in the direction that God would be leading each and every one of you. I think all too often we get caught up in this world of trying to be like those around us rather than being what we say we are. I'm a Christian. I'm a little bit like Christ. And I emulate Christ. I don't emulate people. I emulate Christ. I'm not controlled by things. I'm not controlled by this world. I'm not controlled by emotions. I follow Jesus. And as we read in our gospel lesson, the blind will see, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear, the dead will rise. Isn't that where we want to be? Rather than the world that's going to do everything in its power to trick you and try to take you down? Wow. So again, God says to us, be still and know that I am God. <coughs> David, another man of God who knew the love of God but also knew the wrath of God. A man who had been blessed by God in many ways and had everything the world had to offer. He would stray. He would make mistakes. But when God brought it to his attention, he changed his ways. And he asked for forgiveness, and God forgave him. But God is saying, be still and know that I am your God. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. It's a passage I've shared with you on a number of occasions because it means a lot to me as I, I look at that passage. God says, I'm not invisible. I'm not hidden behind the clouds. I'm not off in some far mountain range or another country. I'm not hiding behind a bush. I'm here. And you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And it brings us in conclusion. Pray with me, please. Dear God, today I woke up. I'm healthy. I'm alive. I'm blessed. I apologize for all my complaining. I'm truly grateful for all you have done in my life. Amen. We stand, please.